Jamie Callison, the executive chef and culinary educator at Washington State University. Um, feel free to turn on your videos just so we tell our students so we know that you're um, you're there um, with our students or college students. We say that we know that they're not sitting by the pool um, drinking a Corona. So, um, of course, for some of you, it is five o'clock. So if you had a stressful day of teaching and you want to have a glass of wine, that's okay too. You can just have it with them. We can watch you on the video. So, uh, <laughs> so um, I, I'm a um, I'm a culinary educator, but came from industry, and I actually used Master Cook in industry for many years, and um, it was an amazing tool for me. So I'm going to start a little video just to kind of break the ice. Um, I teach culinary arts now online, just like a lot of us are doing, um, and I started out making my own home videos and um, not making any promises. This one's on mac and cheese. It doesn't. Ha it just doesn't have a voiceover. We did some music with it. I forgot to turn on the lighting at the beginning. All kinds of things went wrong, but it just... Um, you know, I spliced it together and it was what it was, right? It was a great way to interact with the students and, and give them some real feed. And this was actually one of my better ones. Some of the first ones were, um, I did a bloopers one too, that was very, um, it was hilarious. I, I cried a lot watching it just because I seen how many mistakes I made. So, and that's part of it, right? So I'll get right to that. Let's see here. For some reason that disappeared. So I'm gonna scoot over here. We talk about technology, right? So I think the Zoom call took over my mac and cheese video. So we'll pick that up real quick. And we definitely want some interaction. So any questions um, that you may have would be would be great. So Chef Jamie, if it's fine with you, if, if they have questions during the presentation, um, I'll let you just yep. decide if you want to take questions or not. Perfect. Sorry for this little delay. The My computer took over the, and for some reason it's not pulling it up right now. So it'll just be one second. But you know, part of, um, we use, um, sorry, I'll quit talking so I can just get this up. Yeah, it's the same kind of stuff that happens when uh, when I teach in my class. Like, all of a sudden the Wi-Fi goes out and everything goes down. That's that's virtual that's teaching that. and virtual learning, right? That's, yeah, and uh, actually, I'm do, I'm doing this to show you guys what not to do. So um, <laughs> <laughs> it, it's coming up. So and for some reason it's delaying too. So sorry about that. Completely off topic, hearing. but Jeffrey, is that your actual kitchen? Because it's stunning. Oh, no. No, nope. I was going to say I'm so jealous right now. Yeah, no, I'm just in my little like corner in the middle of uh, the living room that I uh, like when I when I get home and I have to jump on a a zoomy. Uh, like virtual uh, virtual backgrounds are the best thing ever. Sometimes I put myself in Bob's Burgers or wherever. <laughs> All right, here we go. So this is again, a little video that I put together, no promises on the quality of it. It's just what it is. This is where I forgot to turn on the lighting. So it's kind of dark. It's just a little over two minutes.
So again, um, you know, all of us kind of started like overnight with um, having to piece everything together, right? And it was, um, I think that video took me about six hours to edit <laughs> because I had no idea what I was doing. So, um, but Master Cook was a huge help for me. And um, we, you know, the students being able to have it and, and, and be able to share the recipes and stuff were, were really, really helpful. So I'll, I'll go ahead and get my, hopefully my PowerPoint open. I had everything totally open, ready to go. And it's amazing how these things kind of work, right? So. But that's part of it, right? I was doing a um, live video stream the other day and I got about five minutes into it and they came in and they said, oh, by the way, um, the recording never started. So I, and I was making soup. So I sweated out my vegetables. Everything was kind of done. So when I got, when they finally turned it on, I was like, oh, and by the way, I've started this a little early just so you didn't have to watch me go through this whole process <laughs> and those kind of things, right? That's the story of our lives right now. So um, MasterCook, again, I've been using this for about um, 20 years. Um, in industry, I used it. I, uh, it was um, early on, I learned that, you know, from a, a couple of chefs I worked with, how important it was to start that database of recipes. Um, I worked for this Swiss chef that would just, you, you couldn't come to work without a piece of paper, a pad of paper and a pen in your hand. If you didn't write down everything he said. Um, and then the next chef I went to work with was this amazing Italian chef and she was the same way. I mean, if you didn't write down what she said, how she said it, and then come back with a recipe at some point written up, you couldn't work there. So it was, it was just like, you, you need to have this database. So um, I was very fortunate. So why MasterCook? Well, it's the ability to create and customize um, cookbooks. And again, all of you probably do this too. I'm a horrible PowerPoint person because I start talking and I get about halfway through the PowerPoint presentation and, and then I have to catch myself back up. So if I do that, just kind of, you, you know what it's like. So th that means you have emotion about it, right? So. Intuitive recipe building tools, it's just great because you can actually, um, I had a student that just opened it up um, the other day. She came into the class late and she's like, well, I need the training. I said, well, first just go through it. I mean, it's easy to use, it's intuitive. And, and so, and then I'll come back and I'll, I'll have a, um, uh, some office hours with you to kind of work you through it, but just, just work through it, right? At first. Ability to print and save recipes to PDF. Um, I probably uploaded 20 recipes in PDF for my students today um, so that they can print those off. They have the cookbooks, but there's something about them being able to go right to it. I do a hyperlink to it. They go right to it. They print it off. They have it and it's ready to go. And it's amazing. And then also just sharing that recipe. You know, somebody, um, we're doing a, um, a virtual dinner party here in a couple of weeks. And so we're able to, to print the PDF and, and share that recipe with our alumni. So, uh, which is pretty amazing. Create personalized cookbooks. I think we have six cookbooks in our operation right now. We have a, a pastry cookbook. We have our culinary fundamentals cookbook. We have our catering cookbook. And that's really important for you with catering operations. A lot of you are trying to make a little bit of revenue. So having those, those recipes, those standardized recipes that the students can um, uh, work off of is really helpful. Easy to share, save, and import cookbooks. Um, you know, the I, uh, Blackboard, I just put the whole cookbook on there. And it, you know, you know, if you've used MasterCook, it's 30 seconds to download the whole cookbook. And I have over 200 recipes. I mean, it just, and it goes right into their cookbook and it's ready to go. They can start editing it. They can change it how they want. It's really amazing. And again, um, you can share cookbooks. I know that I, um, I'll, I'll send Pam, I'll send you an updated version of it though, but there's a cookbook that we have for our culinary fundamentals program that would be available for all of you. We'll share that with all of you. Um, okay, it's, great. It's a, yeah, so I'll send you, there was a couple of um, edits I just changed, so I'll send that to you and you can send that out to everybody. Because um, that's recipes are science, right? And science should be shared. And what's nice about that is he's going to send me a master cookbook file that works with MasterCook. And so I can send it to you. And if you have MasterCook, you can just easily add it right into the program. And I did a lot of, um, I, I don't know if a lot of you are on the Facebook page for um, ProStart. Um, that was amazing. We were sharing a lot of great videos and a lot of great stories during this. So I jumped on that as soon as it started just to engage with everybody. So I learned a lot. So MasterCook gives the students a lifetime tool um, so that they'll be able to um, create recipes and, and treasure chests of professional and personal recipes. You know, I tell my students, if you have a grandma or a grandparent or a family member or a friend that makes this amazing dish, write it down. Don't, don't let it go, go away and I'll get into that more, but it's really important to document that. Create a recipe collection um, for your students catering operations. Again, that's we have uh, catering operations that we do and without those standardized recipes, it would be a mess. So it's really helpful. So the importance of building a recipe base from day one and uh, when you're learning how to cook. And like I was talking about, I've been um, cooking professionally for 
I hate to say this, but 38 years. Um, and I have recipes from day one that I still use every day. Um, not every day, but I have pastry recipes. All of our pastry recipes are from a Swiss chef I work for. All of our, our basic pate dough and all those kind of things. And I still have those. And they have, the great thing is they have a story behind them too. So it's really important to start building that database. And if you don't have a way to store it, it makes it really, really hard. And again, it's science, right? So you can share this recipe with somebody and somebody calls me up and says, oh, you know, I, one of your our clients um, had this dish from you 10 years ago in C when you're 15 years ago when you're in Seattle, I can send that recipe right over to them. So you think to yourself, I will never forget how to make this dish. I've done this so many times. And again, I was, I, even though I, I'm, I'm huge into collecting the recipes, I work in a restaurant for three years, make the same thing every single day. And then I get about four years later after I leave that restaurant, I'm like, man, I want to make that dish. It's like, sometimes, I mean, this is a lot of ingredients. I try not to have this many ingredients in there. Sometimes it's like, really? I can't duplicate this? We had a, a student that, um, one of our um, culinary students that, um, she was amazing at pastry. She has a pastry chef job, or assistant pastry chef job down in San Diego right now. And, um, and she just, um, she made this lemon cake. And I had her go on, and, and that's the other thing about MasterCook is you can go on and you can actually pull recipes right off, you know, right online and pull them right into the MasterCook book. Well, she didn't do that. And I, she got five recipes. I, you know, I would say go out and search a bunch of different recipes and pull it together and make it your own. Well, she made this, uh, the most amazing lemon pound cake I've ever had in my life. It was just over the top you didn't want to make any changes to it at all. And I said, did you import this in a master cook? She's like, no chef, I'll get to it tomorrow. Three days later, did you put it in master cook? No, I'll get to it. We have 120 students go through our kitchen a week and it was on a clipboard. She comes in the office. She's like, I lost the recipe. And she said a few words. So, um, and you know, and she was never able to get that cake to that exact same level ever. It was close, but it wasn't the same. So definitely documenting it and um, is really important. Cause this is what a uh, uh, this is what it looks like cooking without a plan looks like, right? I mean, this is it. I mean, just I love this little shot. So I don't think I've ever watched this movie all the way through, um, but I, I should. Uh, but you know, if you don't have a plan of action, you know, if you don't have a recipe, if you don't have a foundation of what you're doing, it's a mess, right? So you know, a few of the things I teach our students is one is knife skills, cleaning, and being organized. And that includes your recipe, right? Those are the three I think the biggest parts of cooking. So this is. Yeah, I need to watch this movie with a glass of wine in my hand or something. So I, I created a cookbook um, a, a few years ago called The Crimson Spoon. Um, it was a cookbook celebrating WSU. So when I, when I did that, I actually started researching about who has these amazing recipes that are easy to read, that are, you know, usable ingredients. And Ina Garden was definitely by far one of the best that I found. And so I actually looked at how she wrote her recipes. and I kind of changed how I started writing my recipes, making them more approachable less ingredients, um, less and, and more attainable ingredients. If you can't get it at a regular grocery store and you have to go order, you know, $50 worth of this and $50 worth of this on Amazon and use it once, it's useless to me. I don't want to do that as a chef, right? I mean, every once in a while there's that unique ingredient that just makes this dish, it's just exceptional. That's different, but all your recipes, chefs trying to show off by putting all these weird things in that costs hundreds of dollars, doesn't make sense. So, um, so I really kind of followed her uh, in her footsteps in terms of how I organized the recipes and stuff. And it was uh, very helpful. So, cause you gotta have to know your audience, right? I mean, you're writing recipes for people who never have cooked before. And then also your students need to know too, even if they're really experienced, they need to write a recipe. You know, some chefs will pick up one of my recipes like, what are you doing? Why is there so many directions on here? It's like, because these people have never, some of these people have never cooked before. Right. So knowing who your audience is. So, so we use our, um, we actually um, use our, uh, we have a couple of projects that we do in MasterCook for our students and it forces them to start creating that recipe database and that cookbook. So, so their desired learning outcomes, able to create a standardized recipe with clear instructions. And, and that's so important. And, and making sure that, you know, you explain to them that they, they should have people audit them, right? And, and read through them. That's what I do. I, I make a new recipe. I have three or four people read it before I, before I give it to anybody able to put recipes in the correct category and give them accurate descriptions. <laughs> There's so many times one of my students will create a recipe and it's like, this is amazing. And the name on that recipe, I cannot find it to save my life. I know it's in there and I know it's great, but they'll name it after themselves, right? And that'll be the first words in the recipe. Well, it's really hard to search for it then. So um, it really teaching them how to write a recipe, how to label the recipe, how to categorize it so you can actually find it is, you know, 
knowledge of how best to name a recipe and ensure there I go skipping ahead um, search function works and MasterCook has amazing search functions in their um, program. But if you again, if you don't um, just like if you if you go to any database wrong, it's not usable right and so making sure that it's, it's correct able to correctly calculate yields. MasterCook does an amazing job of when you want to, um, you know, um, increase a recipe or decrease a recipe. Uh, one of the things I really work with the students on, though, is, you know, multiples of itself. So if recipes for four people, don't make it for seven, make it for eight, because the recipe gets really strange when you when you change it. So um, and that really is helpful. So you get some weird measurements. So and, and MasterCook does an amazing job of changing them for you as much as it can. But there's some things that, you know, you just have to be knowledgeable of. So. Um, notes um, to increase re recipe usability and substitutions. I've really started putting, and I, the cookbook that you'll get, don't, they don't have all the substitutions in there, but every time now that I'm printing a recipe um, or getting ready to, to uh, post a recipe, I'm putting in there, you know, gluten-free flour. Maybe, you know, if it's for a roux, sometimes you're putting 50% less in there because of the gum that's in there um, or whatever starch that's in there is too thick. Um, you know, like I do a Malaga Tani soup, substituting coconut milk for the cream. So that soup by the time you get done is dairy free and gluten free. So putting all those substitutions in there using um, vegetable stock instead of chicken stock, because a lot of times you think this is obvious, but it's not right. I mean, you or somebody gets a recipe and they there's type A people that have to follow that recipe exactly. So if you don't put those notes in there, it's like, this is not vegetarian. It's like, well, yeah, it is just use vegetable stock. Well, that doesn't make any sense. And, and again, it's just the way we think, right? We're all a little bit, definitely different. So. So more outcomes, able to import recipes from other sources. And again, I love teaching students how to research, you know, a brand new recipe and, and going out and pulling out five recipes and, and picking out the best of those recipes and kind of creating your own recipe, I think is really valuable and then testing it. Able to edit a recipe to include spell check. I need that big time. If without the spell check, um, uh, yeah, MasterCook's great at the, having the spell check in there, so. Able to change the yields to appropriate size, multiple of uh, uh, original recipes. So uh, multiples of themselves is really important. So understand the importance of creating approachable recipes without obtainable, uh, with obtainable ingredients. Again, I'm saying the same thing I said earlier, but these are the student outcomes, right? And if I can't buy the product here in the Palouse, and if any of you are familiar with Pullman, we don't have that big grocery stores. Um, I don't put it in a recipe. If I can't get it here, I may put it as an optional ingredient, but I don't put it in as an ingredient that they think that they have to have to make the recipe successful. Able to save a recipe to another um, cookbook is really helpful so you can kind of move recipes around. Cookbook assignment, um, it's great. So, you know, we have them start, they have to of course start building a cookbook, right? So they their final project is actually a cookbook that they that they actually publish and so, and the beautiful thing is MasterCook makes that really easy. So, so able to create a personal cookbook, um, really easy to, to do. Able to design a cookbook. The design functions are you can put your own cover on there. You can name it how you want. You can, um, and just the, the overall look of how the recipes print. There's, I don't know, Pam knows there's, I don't know how many options there are, but there's a lot of options if you, it has almost 20 different print templates and you can edit all of them. Yeah, and they're, and they're really, um, and they're amazing. So, um, I mean, I, I definitely have found a couple that I, that I think that are more easy to use. Uh, but of course, my pastry chef always does it in the pastry one. And then my, you know, people get kind of creative, but they, they can print how they want in terms of the design. So, able to create a title page. Able to create logical table of contents and index. The beautiful thing about MasterCook is you don't have to, like I wrote a cookbook before, the indexing, I thought when I wrote the cookbook, I was like, I am done. It's like, oh no, you're not. You have to index all this. You have to, all this has to be edited. That's when the real work actually started. I mean, the, and so MasterCook is amazing. MasterCook, if you build the categories and the rest of the cookbook, you'll get, will have a lot of categories. So I like to be able to look at, like let's say you have chicken, uh, chicken dish. And I like to name it chicken so that I can find it, but also have it under poultry, have it under entree. If it's an appetizer, have it categorized as, you can add in as many categories as you want. That's why if I want to cook um, Chinese food tonight, I can actually go and categorize it in, the, uh, in that area and all of the Chinese food recipes pop up. All the, the um, Southwest or Mexican restaurants pop up or, or recipes pop up. So I can, I can go 
through it through those um, kind of ethnic themes, or I can do it in categories in terms of all poultry. If I have, a, if I decide chickens on sale and I buy a chicken, I can go find anything to do with chicken in that one area, whether it's an appetizer, starter, whatever, it's there. And so it's great tools. And the beautiful thing about MasterCook is when you print the PDF, all, all you have to do is say, include categories, include index, include this, it's all there already for you. You don't have to go yeah, create it'll, it'll it. Build them. Yeah, it'll, it'll create and build the index for you. Yeah, and that's, because again, if any of you have ever done that before, that's probably one of the hardest parts of, of creating a cookbook is that final part. So creating categories, like I said, along, along the way, just creating you know those categories so you can find it in multiple different ways. So cuisine titles, I think is really, again, really important. Um, recipe assignment create a standardized recipe of clear. Again, I'm, I'm going to read through some of this pretty quick because it's I'm duplicating, but that's what we do in class, right? So categorize, give an accurate description, name recipe correctly. Again, this is, this, I'm saying it again, but this is so important. Able to correctly calculate yields, knowledge of how best to use notes. Again, this is, a, this is going over more their, their, their assignment and then that connects with their outcomes. So there's our learning outcomes. Able to create a shopping list um, is really important. I mean, it's such a bummer when you get home, right? And you're halfway through the recipe and it's like, dang it, I need an egg. I live on five acres. So it's a long walk to go get an egg. <laughs> I should have chickens, maybe that'd make it easier. So final cookbook project. So this is the book that I, I created here with students. So the students helped create this. We were in the kitchen at six o'clock in the morning cooking oysters and all kinds of stuff. Um, this book has been hugely successful. And again, I'm I'm fortunate that I have my name on it, but it had to do more with everybody else that helped design this book. But I designed the, I created all these recipes right at MasterCook is what I used it. Now, of course, we put it in a different format to, to um, print this book because it was a hardback book. And, uh, but I, the MasterCook gave me the ability to test the recipes, change the recipes, make notes and all those kind of things. And it made my job a lot easier. So, and then I could take that, turn it into a PDF and I could share it with multiple people. And each recipe was tested 10 to 20 times. And people loved it, you know, so then they would give me feedback on how to, you know, it's like, oh, this, this is good, but this didn't read quite right, quite right. Or, you know, your oven's probably way different. Can you put a little more variance in there? All those kind of notes are very helpful, right? Our commercial ovens in the kitchen are way different than, a, than my home oven, right? So writing a recipe for the masses and not just for your commercial equipment. Design, publish, again, it's so easy to do. And uh, we won't probably be able to get to the whole presentation today, but in terms of um, Pam has a lot of great videos and stuff how to, you know, to go through this and, and tools for the students. Um, but this PowerPoint, um, which we'll share with you, does have um, those things on there. So. so again, new cookbook. And Pam, I'm not keeping track of time at all. So you can kind of. Okay. Yeah, we're fine. We're 30 minutes. We're good. Okay. Do we have any questions so far? You guys, we want engagement. Don't you tell your students that? <laughs> Am I doing that good of a job? <laughs> you really are. So we have the chat too there. So um, I know that during these times, it's been so hard to get like, right? I mean, sometimes it's actually easier engagement with the chats and stuff like that. But trying to get actually, it's like, turn on your video, at least smile. I'm, a, I'm actually going to set up a little laugh track up. And so I can, when I tell one of those dad jokes, actually, there'll be laughter in the background to make me feel good. So nice. Unless you guys have a different idea. So, so again, new cookbook. So when you go to create your new cookbook, um, these are some of the cookbooks you can see. We have Bake Shop, Atrium Cafe. We have a cafe downstairs. We have catering. We have Crimps Confections over to, the, um, to your right, um, which is a, a chocolate company that we produce chocolates for. So we have all those recipes um, uh, separated. But MasterCook has a lot of different books and a lot of different recipes that are great resources also. Um, but again, the nice thing is you can share those recipes in between cookbooks, right? And start creating your own cookbook. So, um, and the beautiful thing is when you get, like, if you get my cookbook, you can, you can title it whatever you want. You can steal my recipes and not even put my name on it. Right. But you can put WSU school hospitality recipes. And when you go to create your new cookbook, it, it, you, then all those recipes will just drop right in there. Pastry chef helped me do this. It's all about her. So she wrote Jessica's cookbook. So, um, any of you ever work in industry and work with pastry, it's, it's we're we're a fun they're a fun group so i won't say anything more so new <laughs> new recipe um so just going up and simply creating a new recipe and then the nice question. thing is you can yeah so um 
in Master Cookie, is there any place where um, there might be a uh, a bank of places where there's like a crowdsourced or, or um, common use um, recipe books that you can download? Uh, I know yeah, there's Master some stuff. Master Cookie comes with about, um, you can get about 8,000 recipes. Um, the Master Cook 2020, um, it, it just comes loaded with nothing, but you can you can write to us in support and we'll give you like 8,000 recipes. And there's also different cookbooks on the website that you can get. Okay. And we're going to be adding more to the website. There's already a bunch on the website, but we have a collection of 8,000 recipes across multiple cookbooks like the American Lamb Board. They gave us a bunch of recipes and so we put them within the American Lamb Board um, cookbook. I think you saw that on Chef Amy's screen earlier. One of the cookbooks was that one. Uh, but yeah, if you just contact us and ask for support, we can send you all kinds of cookbooks. And there's some you can download on the internet and, or from the website too, that's the website. Cool. And Thank actually you. the Pro Start program, they they gave us a collection of recipes. And so when you sign up for the MasterCook program, one of the emails that you automatically receive from MasterCook is a download link for that cookbook to use with MasterCook. Jeff, Jamie, cool. do you have that cookbook? I'll have to send it to you. Yeah, I know I don't have that cookbook. And again, we'll share um, my cookbook. That's not my cookbook, the, the WSU cookbook too, which oh, okay. the recipes for 15 years have been tested over and over again. But of course you go in and they edit things every once in a while and I for, you know, you, things get tweaked. So, I mean, but it's it's pretty um, pretty amazing re uh, bank of recipes. And it's for, for basic uh, fundamentals, but also there's some advanced recipes like sweet breads and different things in there too for, because um, I teach an advanced cooking class, so um, for culinary professionals. So, um, so some of this um, that I'm that we're going to go through right now, I'm not really going to spend much time on it because this is something that you know um, you, we'll share this with you. And Pam has created some amazing tools. So, but you know, just the ease of creating a cookbook. Um, some of those tools I think are, are important to kind of see. So up here, I should have made a bigger mouse here, but you, know, you can see where you, you make your you create your name here, number of servings. And I always like to, um, in the yield amount, you know, some people will put servings over there. I don't like to do that because let's say I have a soup and the soup makes two gallons, right? And so let's say it's for catering. But let's say I'm using it as an entree, that two gallons may not serve as many people, right? So putting this in, you know, if it's a protein, I, a lot of times I like to put it in pounds, actually. Um, again, this is my personal preference. So if I'm, if I'm making short ribs, I'm going to serve it as a starter, I can actually decide, I can kind of work with the recipe a little bit more than if I just put servings over here. It's like, what does that really mean? You know, so especially with like soups and different things like that, because sometimes a soup is one and a half cups. Sometimes it's, it's a half a cup, right? Depending on if I have a five course dinner or, or something like that going on. So, so the, you can um, put pictures and you'll see that here in a second. But the nice thing is you put the amount, all the units are already pre-built in here. Then I'll go to the ingredients, the ingredients too. There's a great bank of ingredients. The beautiful thing about that too is all those ingredients have the nutritional link to them. So, you know, that's, that's really helpful. Every once in a while, the, um, it'll be a specialty ingredient that doesn't, but it's very rare. I mean, very rare that I, maybe cougar gold cheese. And we need to probably get that built in there, Pam. But our cheese, yeah, that we there we go. Here, <laughs> it's not in there, right? And that's, but that's a really unique item, right? So, um, so what I could do is I could put cheddar sharp cheese and that's in there and then put over here preferred cougar gold cheese. In the preparation or in the notes so that that helps yeah. if i really if i really care about that nutritional information which in some cases i do and in some cases it's a lab right it's like do some cardio eat some mac and cheese get over it <laughs> not not on a tuesday night but just you know special occasion kind of food so um and again this is the ingredient um ingredient list this says red hot paste which um, may not be there Again, so if something like that is, you can put red, they have, like I said, more ingredient. There's, it's rare that this happens, but you can also put something there and then put it over in the notes or the preparation to kind of give you uh, a little more guidance. So directions, again, really important um, to make sure you read through these over and over again and make sure, and again, you'll, when you get my cookbook, you will open a recipe that a student helped create, or even maybe I did on a, on a day that I was really tired. And if you see something, email me, you know, and say, chef, I, I really don't understand what this recipe is. Something's missing here because it's, it's amazing. No matter how many times it gets edited, there's going to be a mistake somewhere. Right. So um, we edit these and audit these all the time. So make sure you have clear directions. 
cuisine is great, right? So you can actually go to modify categories, which is right over here. And again, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this, create your own cuisines. And then categories are, I think the biggest one, and I have a lot of categories built in mind. Once you build it in there, it's in the cookbook. Once you build your own and you create another cookbook, you can use your category list for a new cookbook, which is amazing. So, so this is a list of some of the categories that I have built in um, again, because I'd like to see it in a multiple different ways. Right. So um, if a, a cookie, if it's a cookie, I want it in the baking and pastry area too. Right. And be able to categorize it in those different areas. So, so save recipe and exit um, the cookbook always save, but it, it always asks you, do you want to save this? So it's, I mean, again, it's really intuitive. Check recipe spelling. This is a big one for me. Um, I, you know, it's, it's amazing when I'm typing really quick. It's like, how come I can't still refrigerate all the time correctly? You know, so if I, if I don't see that, someone of my college students look at me like, chef, are you okay? You know, this is a really easy word to spell and you, and you didn't get it. So this is really helpful. And then when you share those recipes too, it's, it's, it's really helpful. And actually part of the spell check that's important too, is sometimes the word is different than what you intended, right? So in the, it wouldn't even have made any sense to that person trying to make it. Um, recipe yields, again, the number of servings. You go over to the little, um, you see the measuring cup that's circled over here. You hit that measuring cup and you can change the yields and it recalculates the recipe for whatever amount that you want, uh, which is amazing. After you do that, sometimes you have to go back through and make sure it's not just a really strange measurement. Um, you know, so sometimes I'll actually print that recipe and just make little notes on there because I don't want to maybe save it either after I've upped it to 200 people when our average recipe was 24. Or so but I'm able to make quick little notes on there to make it easier for the cooks to use. So, or you can save it to bulk, right? Save it as that same recipe, but bulk. Um, I do that sometimes too. So this is our mac and cheese recipe. Again, we can put the picture up here um, at the top. So the picture's there. You can link videos to it too. So uh, you better have videos right in there, which is, I mean, students are visual, right? So a lot of our videos now we're making two minutes to three minutes max and, and no voiceover or anything. It's just the ingredients and kind of like the, I think they were the tasty videos. That's where I got the idea from originally. They were about two to three minutes. No um, uh, words, no music. I put music in there just to kind of keep them excited, but it's all typed over. And then that way they can kind of, it's like in two and a half minutes, they can watch a whole demo of that whole item, which is I think really powerful. So print publish. This is the great, I mean, this is amazing. So when they do their cookbook project, so you go to print publish, you can go to PDF. And then you see down here, you have um, the title page, table contents, you can fix recipe index category. You have to um, pick over here, entire cookbook and all those things become options for you. So you don't, again, you don't have to do all that, which is absolutely amazing. So I'm just gonna kind of skip through this because we're kind of running a little bit out of time. So again, these we're gonna share these items with you, but just um, you can print the entire cookbook to PDF and we do this and we've, um, I do this mainly for backup, but I, um, that's the other thing that's really important. It's to back up the master cook files. But the nice thing is most of them are online now. Uh, most of your options are online. Um, but the beautiful thing is to say your computer um, totally goes down. Um, I have them backed up in a separate spot. That's happened a couple of times um, over the years. I'm able to reinstall MasterCook, double click on that on that um, cookbook, and in five seconds, in a lot of cases, I know maybe exaggerating a little bit, my whole cookbook is back, which is absolutely amazing. So again, uh, view uh, PDF cookbook. So this is um, basically culinary fundamentals. I put all the chef's names on there. Uh, this is part of the index. So again, the index self creates by alphabet, alphabetically. Um, the categories are where you can go in and start kind of really seeing how you, the categories in the cuisine. So this is a salad that my student made a couple, couple of weeks ago. We were doing a um, live dinner, um, live stream dinner, which was in, it, it was a test and it worked out pretty good. So um, this is a WSU um, heirloom tomato, WSU greens from organic farm cougar gold cheese on the bottom and we made crackers with the cougar gold cheese um, really the only thing not from wsu is the olive oil and the balsamic vinegar to make the dressing um, so this is all wsu so this is absolutely amazing um, 
but the students, I mean, they, they helped create the, the recipe cracker, the cracker recipe. She did this presentation live stream on TV. And so it was, it was pretty amazing. And, but again, having the tools for success kind of gives your students the ability to kind of step out and kind of then start to have that little bit of creativity. So what about questions? We're, you're all being graded. So um, participation points are really not doing well right now. So they asked, they asked some questions in chat and I um, answered them in chat too. Some were just like, okay. you know, how do we get MasterCook and that sort of thing. So yeah. Do you guys have any questions for Chef Jamie? So and then um, I know Pamela could share my email too if you have any um, any questions? Sorry, my program's kind of freaking out here. We're not going to start this video again. There we go. So if you have any um, any questions or anything, you can definitely reach out to me. We'll share the cookbook. Um, again, this is just a great way to, um, it, it's a really great engagement tool for your students.